Hey booktube, this is Friday Reads. I'm Jen and I talk about audiobooks and I had a great reading week this past week. I read four, five books, five and a half actually. Um, I'm about halfway through one of them. And so let me tell you about them. I finished up Opposition, which is the last book in the Lux series by Jennifer L. Armentrout, and also the prequel novella, which is called Shadows. And um, these are narrated by Justine Eyre, and I've said over and over again that I don't like Justine Eyre. She has a whine in her voice and it bugs me, but when I speed her up, she's okay. So she's actually a very talented narrator, and uh, I, I think overall I would have to give her narration high marks for that. It's just that one thing that bugs me. But you know, it's largely eliminated when I speed her up. So if you're gonna listen to her and that bugs you, that little whine in her voice, then speed her up. She'll probably be fine. Before I tell you about this book, or these, the book and the novella, uh, I have to tell you that on Friday it was my birthday last week, and so I decided to treat myself to two books. And one of them was the second bind up in this series. I owned the first one and the last one, but I didn't own the middle one. So uh, the series is, um, let's see, books one, uh, book one is Obsidian, book two is Onyx, book three is Opal, book four is Origin, and then book five is Opposition, and then the novella is called Shadow, Shadows, I think. So um, yeah, I ordered that, and then one other thing that I'll tell you about. Opposition was good as an ending to a series. It was okay. I gave it four stars. I thought it had a great uh, finish to the series. You know, the characters were really good. I don't, <laughs> the char main characters are Damon and Katie and Damon was a little, kind of went a little overboard on the overprotective of Katie kind of situation because Katie was really able to take care of herself. There was um, something that happened after the big climax at the end that was very, anticlimactic, very unnecessary to the plot. I just did not see the point. I, I thought, why did you do this and essentially ruin the ending? She didn't, Jennifer L. Armentrout, I don't think totally ruined the ending, but she certainly did it no favors by throwing this little thing in. So there's also an epilogue, which I thought just didn't need to be in this, in this book. Um, I'm a fan of epilogues generally speaking, because I think they add a little bit more to the happily ever after. But in this case, I think what the epilogue was trying to do could have been accomplished in a couple of sentences or maybe a paragraph at the end of the book. So, yeah, I don't think so. So I ended up giving that four stars because overall I think it was really good, even with the problems. Now, Shadows, which was the prequel, is focuses in on Damon's brother, uh, Dawson is his brother, and so this focuses on Dawson's backstory. Dawson gets involved with Beth, and when book one begins, Dawson and Beth are missing. They are presumed dead, and so I guess this prequel is kind of a, I don't know, an attempt to give us the backstory of how that happened or why it happened or something. I just thought it was totally extraneous, completely unnecessary. I didn't care. I, you know, I kept waiting for the books to kind of get finished. Like, you know, they fell in love and had this, you know, relationship the same way that Damon and Katie did. So it was a repeat of the two main characters. It's like, why, why do we care about this? It didn't lend anything to the story. I think the function of those two characters were to affect the emotional uh, state and stability of the main characters. So. I just didn't see the point. So I ended up giving that one two stars. Then I uh, finished up uh, two of the books. I'm almost to the end of the series uh, of the McCarthy's of Gansett Island series by Marie Force. I picked up book 13, which is Love After Dark. And the thing about this series is you have to pay attention and you have to read a couple of books at a time at least in order to kind of keep up with the characters because there are a lot of characters by book 13. Um, so that was a little bit of an extra step. I wouldn't say it was difficult, but it was like there were times that I thought, okay, wait a minute, who is that? I read these as ebooks because the narrator is just 
abysmal. She's deplorable. <laughs> She's awful. So I ended up giving that two and a half stars, but I did round that one up to three. Then I read uh, book 14, which is Celebration After Dark. And apparently this technically is a novella, but it didn't read like a novella to me, so I don't know. Uh, it focuses in on the mom and the dad, who are the parents of the main family. Um, it's They're the parents, and then they have five children, and they are in their 60s. And so it was their 40th anniversary. So it's the story of them and a lot of backstory as to how they got together back, you know, when they did and what life was like for them in their early married years. And, um, and then it catches you up with a lot of the other characters. And uh, just basically, it was the big party. It did kind of highlight each couple and how much they love each other, whatever, you know, whatever. So anyway, I ended up giving that one three stars. It was on the higher end of like three and a half stars, but still three. And the other book that I picked up and I'm halfway through is called The Girl Who Ran Away by Joan G. Robinson. This was originally titled Charlie. It is a uh, book that was published by the Scholastic um, company back in 1969. This means something to me because I don't know if I was talking to somebody or I read something or caught, I don't know, something um, that put me to mind of children who are misunderstood or underappreciated or feel unloved for some reason or another. And I remembered that I read this book when I was in fifth grade. I was in Miss Darnstead's class and I got it as part of the weekly reader program. And, um, you know, it just hit me at a place that uh, affected me at that time for that reason, because it was about a girl who, you know, felt all those things. And I felt all those things in the fifth grade. I did not have the easiest of childhoods. But um, I decided I, you know, I grabbed it out of my shelf of children's books over there, and it is a mess. It is just a mess. The cover is falling apart. Um, the back cover actually had fallen off until I taped it on, not you know, half hour ago, and I was using it as a bookmark. <laughs> it's just, I mean, it was, it was published in 1969, and I think I found this at a thrift store, I don't know, one time, and I thought, oh, that's that book I loved. So, so because it was my birthday, and I'd already gotten online to order um, the Lux book, I decided to order a new copy. It's in really nice condition. I mean, it's, it's aged, obviously. It was published in 1969. But, um, so the covers are, or the pages are all yellowed, but it's very clean. You know, there's no, um, there's a little bit of shelf wear and a little bit of creasing, and, you know, the corners are turning up, but I'll take it. So I've started reading it again, and it's set in the UK, which makes me wonder if, uh, if any of you have read it who live in the UK or are from the UK when you were a kid. Maybe you picked it up and read it. Um, it's a 224 page book and I was very impressed with myself that I read that in the fifth grade until I realized that my kids and you know uh, most people in the fifth grade these days were reading Harry Potter which is like 700 pages by the time you get to the later books I thought okay no I'm not impressed with myself anymore I'll finish this probably later this afternoon um, and I'll let you know if it was really as good as I remembered when I was 10 We'll see. I don't know. I'm also listening to Phantom Pains. This is by Michelle Baker. It is narrated by Arden Hammersmith, and I love it. It is book two in the Arcadia Project. And the thing about the narration, Arden Hammersmith is brilliant. She is just amazing in her narration, except that she can't do a highbrow English accent. One of the characters was uh, speaks that way. And I was listening last night, and I thought, I'm a stickler for accents, and she just was not pulling that one off, but that was okay. So this is about a woman who tried to commit suicide and threw herself off of a third-story building, the third story of a three-story building, and ended up not dying, but she broke a lot of bones, and most significantly, her legs were crushed, and so she lost... Um, uh, basically her legs, both of them. So she has prosthetics that she wears and she is also um, a person who suffers from borderline personality disorder, which kind of came into play with the whole suicide attempt. 
So she's been going through a lot of therapy and um, she gets recruited by this agency called, or this group called the Arcadia Project, which polices the gates and the uh, presence of the Fae in our world. So really interesting combination of a crime kind of a story with a fantasy story. And the characters are wonderful. Um, I really enjoy them. I, they're very colorful. She's very colorful. And um, it, there's a lot of reference made to her, more to her um, BPD than like her mental disorder than the disability. Although there is a fair amount of reference made to that too because she has to walk around and get up and down the stairs and things like that. And so, you know, um, reference is made to how hard that is for her. And, you know, I'm not a person with a disability, but I have to say that I think it's handled relatively well. And I am a person who deals on some level with mental disorders, so I know that that's being handled really well. And primarily in the way that she responds to the environment around her. Um, she finds herself in situations where she has to step back and go, okay, I need to use these techniques to be able to cope with this situation. She's very aware of herself. So, uh, but like I say, it's more of a crime, you know, mystery whodunit than anything else. And, you know, it's made entertaining by all of these other elements in the book. So I'm really enjoying that. That doesn't come out very long ago. Um, it's only been out for a little while. So, so I'm listening to that. And then I'm also buddy reading, uh, buddy listening to Dear Life by Megan Quinn. And that's narrated by Holly Chandler, Douglas Berger, Marais Alameda, Alameda, and Philip Church. That's about four characters who have all recently gone through a tragedy and are having trouble moving on with their lives. And so they come into contact somehow, either through a friend or by other means, uh, with an organization called Dear Life that um, enables you to uh, gain some coping skills and encouragement to move on with the rest of your life. And so I haven't gotten very far into that. The narration is okay. One of the narrators, the guys, sounds like he's good at doing commercials, voiceovers for commercials, like on television and radio. but. Uh, so he's kind of pitching all the dialogue to you, you know, like, I don't know. It, that's just how it strikes me. Um, and another of the narrators is fairly inexperienced or sounds that way. So, you know, it's all personal, you know, preference and all of that when it comes to what you appreciate and don't appreciate in a narrator. But all of it is moderately good, I would say. So Lisa at Books and Smiles, who I talk about all the time, she and I are listening to that. That was one of the books that she wanted to read. So it is adult, obviously, and um, after we finish that, we are going to move on and listen to, re-listen, both of us, to the Until the End of the World series by Sarah Lyons Fleming, which is narrated by Julia Whalen. And I don't love Julia Whalen because I don't like her register, her range, and the pitch that she uses for her male characters. They tend to sound all the same, but this story is so good that I don't care. It is three books in the, and a novella. They are Until the End of the World. The novella is book 1.5 and it's called So Long Lollipops. And then the uh, second book is And After. And then the third book is Until the End of the World and After. All the Stars in the Sky. And it's a book about, or it's a series about zombies. It's adult and I think it's very reminiscent of The Walking Dead, kind of, um, in that this author is not afraid to kill off characters and, you know, have characters go through horrible experiences and all of that. So it's, I just loved it last year or whenever it was that I read it. I think it was a couple of years ago, uh, of go, a couple of years ago when I read it. So anyway, that is the week ahead and that's what I read last week and that's what I'm reading right now. You know what, I got to the end of this video and completely forgot about one book that I read that I forgot to tell you about and the giveaway that I did last week. So first of all, let me tell you about the book. It was book five in the Chronicles of St. Mary's. It is No Time Like the Past. This is by Jody Taylor and it was narrated brilliantly, brilliantly 
by Zara Ram. I love this series. I've talked about it a lot because I've read a lot of the books and they come up in wrap ups and that sort of thing. It is time travel with a strong, strong historical element. So you get to go back in time and revisit historical events. Uh, the group in this uh, story, it's set in the UK at a place called St. Mary's, which is an institute. And um, they go back in time to observe only to observe, not to participate, not to influence, but only to observe. And every time they do, something goes wrong, and so then they have an adventure. Uh, the characters are great because they're very stoic Brits, and they tease each other mercilessly, and I just fall in love with several of them. So highly recommend this series, and I ended up giving that book four stars. Now the giveaway. I did a random number generator uh, out of the 20 comments that I received and the number that came up was 20. I started at the top and I counted down to 20. So the winner is Lil Text Twister. She and I have talked a lot in comments and she's an avid, avid audiobook listener. So I'm very happy to give you the audiobook of your choice. So congratulations to the winner and thanks everyone, everyone for the happy birthday wishes because it was fabulous. And that is it for now for me. So if you've read any of these books, let me know. I would love to talk to you about them and I will see you next time. Have a great weekend and a great week ahead. Thanks for watching.